time for the main event. Pace Academy, the hometown crowd is here. It's packed, it's live, it's loud. They're facing Woodward Academy. Guys, great matchup to end the night for the Hawks Naismith Classic here tonight. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I mean, you got a matchup of two of the best private school teams in the state. Uh, Walker Kessler is arguably the best player in the state, headed to North Carolina. He's a seven-footer who's extremely skilled. He can shoot the ball from the perimeter. He can put the ball on the floor. Uh, he's one of those old-school shot blockers in the fact that he keeps the ball in play when he blocks shots. But then Emery Lanier, who's Rob Lanier's son, uh, moved over from Knoxville, Tennessee, is a very good player. Uh, then they have Josh Hall, who's a wing. That's a big-time player as well. Pace Academy has Sherman White, who's an excellent coach. Um, they have three guys who are juniors, headed by Matt Cleveland, who's one of the top players in the state. So uh, it's going to be a great matchup. Their crowd is lively. I mean, it's people, it's people walking all over the place. It's standing room only. I'm really looking forward to this matchup tonight. Yeah, these are two of the most premier private schools in the city of Atlanta. Um, you know, everybody knows about Walker Kessler. He really, really touch. And uh, everybody knows about Cleveland. I, I'm really look, look more looking for the supporting cast. I mean, Lanier, I think, committed to Davidson this week or signed with him. Uh, I'm looking at Will Richard transfer over from Fayette County uh, uh, for, for Pace. Um, Messina, Messina, or I'm sorry, for, for, for Woodward. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how the supporting cast does. You know, Sherman White's won six, seven state championships. They named the quarter after him on Tuesday at Miller Grove. Uh, and then Anthony Thomas won a state championship at Woodward himself as a player in 1998. So a lot of history with these with these two story, two story programs, and uh, it'll be a good matchup. Both teams are going in this matchup 1 and 0. And I know it's really early in the season, but dropping down to 500, going 1 and 1, one of these teams will tonight. What does that do to your psyche? Does that do anything to you? I think it's early, so it doesn't bother you as much. What I just think the biggest thing is is to get a win uh, early in the season in a packed crowd uh, in an environment where you kind of can garner some respect for your team moving forward. Uh, it can be a great building experience as you move forward. Both of these teams have anticipations of winning the state championship, um, but also just getting respect in the state. You know, as some of the smaller private schools, uh, people don't respect you as much because they don't see you on these type of platforms and these type of scenarios. Uh, so to have the, the showcase premier game tonight it's big for both programs, and both teams are looking forward to playing really well. Quite honestly, I didn't even really hear your question because it's so dang loud in here. <laughs> so I'm going to say what I want to say. Um, <laughs> uh, but I'm interested to see what the pace is like today. Like, you know, because pace likes to get up and down. No pun intended. They like to get up and down. And then and then Woodward's really, really skilled. You know, a kid like Lanier, it's always good. And LeBarry can tell you about this morning. But it's always good to have a coach's son on, your, on the court. Keeps the team even keeled. Knows the ins and outs, real smart. Going to Davidson must be pretty dang good uh, than Kessler. So I'm really seeing how if it's going to be a half court game, it's going to be a full court game, and, and then what they run offensively, defensively as the game moves forward. Definitely loud in here. It's hard to hear you guys as well. That just shows what kind of atmosphere we have here at Pace Academy. It's Woodward Academy versus Pace Academy, two private schools going head to head right here on the SUVTV.com. At the Inman Center on the campus of Pace Academy. It is the final game of the Hawks Naismith tip off classic. The Nightcap, the host, Pace Academy Knights, and the Woodward Academy War Eagle. Joel Hillsman, Dr. Rush Yaga, and Lewis Preston will be on the call with you. Gentlemen will step out for the national anthem.
and the crowd erupts. It is jam-packed, gill to gill, wall to wall, from the floor to the ceiling. Dr. Russ Triaga, with all of the coaching experience that you have, I welcome you to the broadcast booth with myself and Lewis Preston. I'm going to apologize to you right now for things that are coming out of Lewis Preston's mouth. I'm not responsible for them. We are going to have a very good time as they introduce the starting lineups, and I'll do the same for you for the Woodward Academy War Eagles. It'll be number two, Emory Lanier, a senior. Number four, Will Rashawn, a junior. Number 10, Michael Whitmore, a senior. Number 11, Will Demarest, a senior. And number 13, Walker Kessler, a senior. Lanier, Rashawn, Whitmore, Demarest, and Kessler. The head coach of Woodward Academy is Anthony Thomas. For the Pace Academy Knights, the starting lineup is number one, Josh Minneberg, a junior. Number three, Madison Durr, a junior. Number 24, Cole Middleton, a junior. Number 30, Josh Reed, a sophomore. And number 35, Matthew Cleveland, a junior. Minneberg, Durr, Middleton, Reed, and Cleveland. Coach Preston, initial thoughts of what you want to see from either team in this ballgame. I just want to see a great finale to an otherwise great day of basketball here at the Holston Nation of Classic. Everybody knows about Walker Kessler. Everybody knows about Emory Lanier, who signed with Davidson. I'm looking forward. This will be the first time in a while that I put my eyes on Matt Cleveland. Looking forward to him, Cole Middleton. I'm ready to ball for the ball to tip. Coach Triaga, what are you looking forward to seeing in this contest? Uh, I've been waiting all day to see how Coach White's going to handle Walker Kessler. What's he going to do? How's he going to play it? I talked to him a little earlier. He smiled, said little of this, little of that. That would be Coach White's way, uh, but I got to believe he's got a firm idea of what he wants to do. I will say this. I do know Coach White, and I do know when he coaches against the high-level player that Walker Kessler is, he will go right at him from the start and make him defend his turf without fouling, and I would expect to see that early on. Pace, the home team, the whole school, all in white. White tops, white bottoms, dark navy numbers, and Carolina blue trim, and their student section is a bit raucous. Woodward Academy all in black, black top, black bottom. They got white numbers, they've got red trim, and their student section may break the bleachers as well. <laughs> Eight minutes are on the clock. The Hawks Naismith tip off classic nightcap and finale only on SUV TV. In the mezzanine level, Joe Hillsman, Dr. Russ Triaga, and Coach Lewis Preston on the call. A pleasure. I'll say it now, this is how we do basketball in Georgia. We are underway. Woodward Academy wins the tip and in possession, Michael Whitmore. The left hand dribble and spins it over to Emory Lanier. Kessler turns, fading, short. Rebound comes off. And a foul call, and this foul will be on Will Richard. Will Richard coming over from Fayette County. Last year as a sophomore, 9.3 points per game and 5.7 rebounds at Fayette County under Andre Flynn. And Fayette County and Flynn has been superb. A deep playoff run fell short. Richard now comes over to add to this Woodward Academy bunch and head coach Anthony Thomas' squad. Richard's a little bit of a, uh, what do you call Swiss Army knife. He's going to do a little bit of everything. He can defend. He can Thievery. Whitmore oh. in one. Michael Whitmore with the thievery in the hoop and the horn. I don't know whose student section is louder, but it's going to be a fun, fun ball game. Oh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I guess we decided to keep the foul ball trial, huh? I haven't seen it. <laughs> the three-point play is completed the old-fashioned way by Michael Whitmore. Three-nothing to start for Woodward Academy. I'm interested as well for you and Coach Preston to see Matthew Cleveland, especially with big-time competition. Everybody knows Walker Kessler, and I love Walker Kessler, and he's going to one of the great basketball factories going against the grain family-wise. Coming away with it up ahead. They'll run it in transition. Whitmore picked up by Miniberg. They let him bump on the play. Whitmore baseline float. No, he's being attacking and now draws the foul on Miniberg. You're going to have to give Whitmore just a touch of space here yeah. on the perimeter. You don't want him turning the corner 
uh, after he gets you in foul trouble, he's just going to start tossing it up to Walker Kessler at the rim. And Dr. Ross, we've always talked about this. Contact to the offensive man's advantage. He knows exactly where you are, right? Whitmore did a great job of getting that initial contact, getting that second, forcing the referee to make a call. He misses the first. So he's one for, what is he, one for two from the line now. Step up for the second one. That one's true. Split them, as we like to say. Four nothing, Woodward Academy. Pace working back on possession now, Madison Durr. Durr has it worked on defensively by Rashaw. Bumping up near the sideline, now Kessler comes out on the trap. Down low, underneath, up and in, Cole Middleton. Cracks the seal. Charmin White, the head coach of the Pace Academy Knights in his second year, after two years as an assistant at Georgia State and then all of the fine years at Miller Grove with those seven championships. Lanier bounces it off. Floater, bounce off, no. Rebound, tip, fight for it, out of bounds. So it looks like early on the, the idea with Walker Kessler is we're going to tag him the whole time, right, Lou? They're tagging him. They're, they're going to tag him. They're not going to let him move in space at all, keep two hands on him, and just kind of guide him away from the play as much as possible. Well, what's really interesting about him, he's not really a pick and roll big. He's a more of a pick and pop. So by tagging him, you're going to make him stay in space and get your body between him and the basket, and then you can be there to contest the shot. Fight for it underneath. Bodies on the floor. Cleveland comes in. It'll be a jump ball. There's a couple of hungry teams out there. We had six players on the floor throughout that possession. That right there puts pressure on me as a coach to keep you on the floor because you're getting on the floor doing the dirty work. Possession will I'm go to pace. <laughs> Sorry about that, Joe. That's all right. Feel, feel the need to answer Luke. You have to, or he'll mute you. Oh, there you go. He's too close to the board. Referees are getting together and discussing something, and this is one of the finer crews in the state of Georgia. Yeah, we needed that for the nightcap. Woodward Academy, 22-9 last year, fell short in the semifinals to Carver Columbus. Walker Kessler, that man, a double-double, a walking double-double, 21 and 11 last season were the averages. Mm. Middleton catches the inbound pass, two minutes gone here in this first quarter. Shot clock down to 10. Foul call on Will Richard. That's a big foul on Will Richard, his second. And now Anthony Thomas looks at Will Richard. He looks down the bench. And he makes a move and says, I need Andrew Nye to get up and go take his place. And I don't think he wanted Nye to come into the contest this early. Well, then the other thing about this is, how long are you going to let him sit yeah. there? You played two minutes and 11 seconds. How much do you trust him? Are you going to bring him back at the end of this quarter? Are you going to bring him back to start the second? Or are you just going to let him sit there until the start of the third quarter? Oh, uh, number 25 is checked in. Not listed. Oh, slipping. I'm going to have to catch that at the end of the quarter. 5.46 to go. Here's around the screen is Madison Durr. Durr dumps it down low. Caught up off the window and scored. Nice move by Ben Crawford, the senior. Some nice pass by Madison Durr right there. He does a great job of not getting rattled, staying the way he needs to stay, and making it happen. You got to guard that. <laughs> Three is no good. And I'll tell you, sometimes... Uh, Coach White is uh, playing chess while everybody else is playing checkers. Yep. That's three possessions in a row. He's brought Walker way out on the perimeter, got him involved in the ball screen, and he's got three across the end line, and it's a you pick it once you make that turn that corner and keep him away from the rim. Here he comes again. Durr. In the air, oh, got a steal. It'll be an easy coast layup. Good. Oh, rolled off, put back home by Walker Kessler with the jam. Oh, jam. Matt oh, Cleveland comes back and jams. Oh, jam. 
How about that? Back-to-back -back booming dunks from your two highlighted players. Here's Emery Lanier. Welcome to Georgia, Mr. Lanier, bringing the game from Tennessee. Floater up, no good. Rebound comes off to Cole Middleton. Long outlet pass to Cleveland. Whitmore's back. Cleveland goes up oh and scores. Matthew Cleveland. The energy in the building right now, I'm going to try and convey it to you. It's lit in here. 424, first quarter. The top level is open. Whitmore running the offense. He gives it to Lanier. Lanier to Kessler. Kessler turns and faces on Middleton. He pulls a 17-footer. No. I, I can't remember a time that I've ever seen Coach Ambler as animated, animated as he is down on the sideline. The referee finally has come over and said, you got to sit down. Uh, Coach Sharman White turned around. Mason wants it now. <laughs> That's been the right-hand man of Sharman White for years. 4-13, Middleton has it. Clock is on, both of them. Eight to six, energy in the building. Offensive foul gonna be called on Madison Durr. Whitmore is really, really coming in field of energy and now just turned to the pace student section and gave him the shush. And I'm it's gonna have early. to tell you this, coach. It's early. All these people in this gym, they paid, but they didn't pay to watch these referees. Let these kids play. That, that's, there's no reason for that whistle, none whatsoever. I felt they were going to let the bumping go earlier in the first minute, minute and a half. Halfway gone, first quarter. 8-6. Pace with the lead. Kessler catches it. Puts it on the floor. Step back like dirt. Wow. wow. Did that look like dirt? Oh, you Walker Kessler. I know Roy Williams is in the building somewhere. I don't know where he is, but I'm sure there was a nod of approval on that one. Kessler knocked it away. Cleveland recovers. Long cross court pass to Reed. Reed spins it to the corner. Middleton drives underneath, goes up. No, he got his own board. He brought it down. He kicks it out to Reed. Open three. No. Middleton, big boy basketball, turns, and a yep. foul call. I love the fight right now. Oh, we're standing, but, man, you know, them Dr. Show things, I think I need my leg strapped down. <laughs> Or the Vertimax is going. Oh, come on, man. You ain't been on the Vertimax in 15 years. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Lou? You ain't been on the Vertimax in 20 years. In about 30. I ain't going to lie to you. Yeah, look at me. I've never been on the Vertimax. <laughs> I break the darn thing. Cole Middleton free throw good. 9 to 8, 324. What I need is some of uh, DeWan Odom's leaps. We all need that some extra of that. gear. That extra gear. Free throw, good, made them both, Cole Middleton. Pace Academy coming in at 1-0 on the season. Showing a little 1-3-1-3 one, uh, one, three, one, three quarter here. The irony of Pace Academy's 1-0 start, they did it on the road at Miller Grove on Charmin White night as they named the Miller Grove basketball court after Charmin White. That's where the one victory came in, a 64-47 win. 20 and 9 last year yeah. in his first year here as the bench boss at Pace Academy. Did he do something at Miller Grove? I mean, did I miss something or was it? Yeah, you were under a rock. Well, <laughs> For about wow. a decade straight. <laughs> Walker Kessler scores. He's got six points. He just won a couple championships. Yeah, three, four, five, six. It ended up being seven in a row, wasn't yeah, it? You don't see Walker Kessler just turn and turn and make that move right there and just float that thing off the glass. He's been so fluid. fluid. He's Smooth. been so fluid. I mean, Ooh. Walker Kessler's special. Split it. Madison Durr, shot no good. Rebound comes off the read offensively. It did not touch the rim, but the clock reset. Here comes Middleton. Middleton puts it on the floor, lost it. Middleton recovers it. In the corner now. And a whistle. They, they, they're probably going to look at the clock, right? Yeah, and I got to look at the shot clock. It didn't touch it. And I've also got to get a number check. There have been 225 added to the contest. Check it. That's a 35. He so wants Lou, 11 on the shot clock. So 232 to go. Sorry, Joel. Coach Lou, when you're watching Walker Kessler, where does he need to get to? I mean, he's going from Woodward Academy to the height of the ACC. What, what does he need? Or what doesn't he have that you think he an area he just needs to get just a little bit better in? So there's no doubt in my mind he's he he, he may be a one and done coach. Yeah, he's about 20, 25 pounds. About 25 pounds. About 25 pounds. And I mean 25 good pounds because this is my thing. He 
by the way that the game's called now, he's going to be able to take the wear and tear. He's just got to be ready for that when he takes that next step. I want to see. I want to see him defensively how he's going to handle. Because there might be some situation where you switch one through five, mm -hmm. that you gotta, that you gotta be able to stay on your feet, move your feet, keep your hands up, and not let that contact get to you. But the way he just sprinted down the floor right there, made that catch, spun in between two guys, got the foul, shooting two. I mean, it's a lot of things right here. You either have it or you don't. Missed the free throw. He has six points so far. Woodward Academy coming in at 1-0 oh on the young season. Missed both free throws. And maybe free throw shoot. I, I'm <laughs> going to put my two cents in on the Walker Kessler yep. thing. He's better than Alec. He's better than Chad. He's better than Houston. He's the best Kessler to come down the Kessler line. <laughs> and I'm, you know, we can debate it for days. Walker Kessler has been that guy. There's a drive, Whitmore up, no. Rebound comes off to Cole Middleton. Under two minutes to go. It's nothing but Georgia in that household, but he took that to North Ooh. Carolina. Oh, Matthew Cleveland. It's Cleveland versus Kessler right now, both of them with six points. Pace has a four-point lead, 14 to 10. Knowing that Cleveland is an athlete and he wants to drive to the basket, why not take another step off of him and make him a 17 to 20 foot jump shoot? Well, I think at least early on, make yeah. him prove that that's going to be a part of it, the game that he has. And if he doesn't have it, you found a way to at least try to contain him. But he's been ex very explosive early on. 16 on the 30, 86 on the game. 14 10, Emory Lanier inbounds to Whitmore. In the corner, cross court pass. Over to Andrew Smith, who's into the contest, along with Jordan Oladapo. I agree with Coach White on that. I don't think that's a very good call. Kessler will take a seat. 118, I like this. He'll get the, probably the rest of the quarter plus the quarter break. We said coming into this game it was going to be standing room only, huh? Lanier is fouled on a three-point attempt from the corner. Yes. It is. That includes us. Yes. <laughs> We're standing too. I dare sit down. He won't see anything. And our great setup right beside the SUV TV game day set. We've been here both days here at the Hawks Naismith Tip-Off Classic exclusively on SUV TV. Emory Lanier at the free throw line. And the first one is good. Lanier coming off of a Class 2A state championship at Webb, Tennessee. And now down at Woodward Academy. Woodward Academy in Fulton County. Pace Academy in Fulton County. It has been a display of Fulton County basketball. Fulton County is the home of the state capital in Atlanta. We are in the city of Atlanta, Woodward Academy. School is in College Park. You want to know what brought Emily, Emory Lanier here? Walker Kessler. <laughs> Actually, his dad becoming the head men's basketball coach at Georgia oh, State. That's right. That did happen. I yeah. forgot about that. I only grew up watching Rob play. <laughs> and that's why I like working with you guys. You know, Lou, I let that sit there for you. I know. <laughs> Lanier comes away with the steal. Here he comes. Lanier gives it off on the break. Layup. It rolled in good. Will Rashawn. And it's interesting. I got to see Coach Lanier in their second game of the year uh, on the road at College of Charleston. I like what he's got going with that Georgia State program in its infancy right now in his two years. Up, oh, no, Cleveland, foul, then we'll go to the free throw line. What event was that, Coach, where we got to? I got to meet you and Coach Lanier down at the coaches. Was that the uh, C no. uh, down yeah. by the airport? Yeah. Minority coaches. Yeah, the yeah. GCA. Yeah. GACA, yes. GACA. Cleveland free throw good. Which was, by the way, a great event. Because between having Rob Lanier, had Earl Grant, CY, CY, 
I mean, I can listen to CY tell stories for days. Well, we know Charlton Young and Leonard Hamilton of Florida State was in the building earlier today. Free throw. And, and he's good. still here. Shoot, if you know CY, CY loves to listen to CY. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag facts. Yes. <laughs> Corner, three ball, Rashard, long, no. Rebound comes off, and the final 17 seconds, shot clock is off. Pace will push it, oh, drops it back out to Middleton. Spins it now on a wing, Madison Durr, final 10 seconds. Gets a screen, steps into a three ball. Hill of the rim, no. Middleton, no. Cleveland, over, jumper, Crawford, no. Rashard, and we are at the end of a thrilling first quarter. The host, Pace Academy Night 16. Uh, the visiting uh, Woodward Academy or Eagles 14. This SUV TV broadcast of the Hawks Naismith Tip Off Classic is brought to you by Atlanta Tip Off Club, Nike. Ken Nugent, Attorneys at Law, for Metco Sports, The Oaks Course, and CBA Sports. We begin the second quarter inside the Inman Center. You're watching the Hawks Naismith Tip-Off Classic. Woodward Academy in possession as you view it, moving, moving right to left. Michael Whitmore in possession. He had four points there in that first quarter. Zone defense now from Pace Academy. Yeah, just switching it up. They'll do that throughout the game. Richard a three in and out. Anything to try and keep Woodward from getting too comfortable. Cleveland up ahead to Cole Middleton, who will dunk it home. Cole Middleton now with six points in the contest. Eighteen to fourteen, seven sixteen. A wonderful crowd in the finality. It's been a wonderful crowd all day. Look at that. Plus eight Pace Academy on the glass. Woodward Academy's got to fix that. Yes. Justin Johnson into the contest, number 22 for Pace. Number 25 for Woodward is Will Demarest. So a number change in order. And I got that correct. Cleveland caught it and turned the foul. I'm going to tell you this right now. Matthew Cleveland is all over the glass. I told you this on air. Mm -hmm. If Matthew Cleveland shows a big game in this environment against Walker Kessler, I'm going to give him a little more love. I haven't been exactly high on him, so I've wanted to see him play in some big-time events and big-time competition, and here it is tonight. For the young man, you have a shot to uh, show me something. Not that I'm anybody to be shown anything to, but just to see where you are overall with a lot of buzz that is around the young man. Absolutely. Inside, knocked away, Rashard out of bounds, a turnover for Woodward Academy. And what I've always said, big time players show up in big time games. So again, like I said earlier, Joe, the, the idea is, is to, to get Walker Kessler away from the basket knowing that he's willing to come out to the perimeter and guard. So they get that ball up to the top and they bring him right away from the basket. They're about to do it again. Here he comes, here he comes off the ball screen. Uh, Justin Johnson probably not the guy to be handling it out there in that look. Great job right there by Kessler. The way he moves his feet, yeah. he's just so agile for his size and he's all of seven feet. 
Here's Whitmore into the forecourt. Two minutes gone. In the second quarter, 18-14, you can tell the crowd is ready for something to happen. And we've definitely settled into a, a basketball game now. A lot of the emotion and stuff from the beginning is gone, and now it's about execution and, and getting things done. Michael Whitmore scoops and scores. He came to play. Yes, he did. Two-point game. Justin Johnson in possession, worked on defensively by Rashad. Hands it to Cleveland. Cleveland goes to the hoop, puts it up, in and out. Kessler swallows up the glass. Pace falls back defensively, and here comes Whitmore. He'll walk it across the timeline and set it up. 16 on the 30. Cross-court pass in the corner. Held it. Turnover. Cleveland peels it back with the right hand. He's worked on defensively by Whitmore. Whitmore is pumped up. Cleveland wants the basketball. Corner three, bottom. The three ball is good. There's no better chance than the overrated chance. That, that was interesting. I wasn't even going to mention it. Three by George Adams out of the corner of the senior. 4-24, second quarter. Lead now balloons out to five. Largest lead for the host pace Knights. Oh, good pass. Inside, Rosard. Whitmore came. Oh, a beautiful seeking find. And the wheel, Rosard. That one was so good, we had to give each other some that. I thought you guys were going to hit me in the head. <laughs> not yet. Nah, not going to do that. Middleton, three ball. Caroms off. Guess who got the glass? Yeah. Kessler, outletting it now to Whitmore. Trailing by three. Picked up by Johnson. Kessler wasn't paying attention. Rashard recovers it out of bounds off of Rashard, and it'll be pace basketball. I'll tell you, Lou, I see this mm -hmm. so rarely, but Walker Kessler is a big who goes and rebounds out of his area. Yeah. He, he, he just goes and, and tracks the ball wherever it is. It's, uh, he, he's, he's tremendously skilled. A he's light on his feet. A, yes. A timeout has been called with 347. It is a 30-second timeout. This is the Hawks Naismith Tip-Off Classic. The Atlanta Hawks and Atlanta Tip-Off Club will be back in the community on December the 13th and 14th at North Cross High School when they host the Hawks Naismith Holiday Classic. For game schedules and event information, visit HawksNaismith.com. Joel Hilton, Lewis Preston, Dr. Russ Triaga. Glad that you're with us wherever you are. The SUV TV.com. Roku, Android, Apple. You have no excuse. I heard rumor has it that YouTube's going to start a Joel Hilton TV. Well, when you get that rumor verified, then you let me know. Madison Durr across the timeline, out of the timeout. The timeout charged to pace. Minneberg, three, caroms off for Shard, gets the rebound. Slows it up. Comes across the timeline and gives it to Emery Lanier. Back to Rashard. Open three, bottom. Will Rashard a triple. Even ball game. It's a 5-0 spurt. Nice back cut. Got to finish that. Oh. Rebound off to Kessler. It was a beautiful action there played. Kessler versatile, brings it up the floor, but now dumps it off to Lanier. Lanier to Whitmore. Whitmore hesitates, now skips it across. Rashard, another wing three. Caroms off, no. Tip by Kessler, gets the board. Foul call. Good hustle. That'll be on Madison Durr. A special thank you to Gatorade, the official provider of sport beverages and nutrition for the Hawks Naismith tip-off classic. So I think there, Wood, Woodward Academies has a great balance of making sure Walker Kessler gets his touches, yes. but not solely him. There's just a nice balance for them offensively where a lot of different people are getting touches and, and a lot of people get good looks. It's an excellent flow to what they do offensively. 
It's not one of those where you're standing around watching him do his thing and then yeah. let me rush to the basket. No, no, no. Yeah. He's an unselfish basketball player. I think he gets as much as dumping it off as he does as making the shot. And they're, they're clearly five willing passers. Cole Middleton across the timeline. Kessler split him. Steal. Rashard. Cleveland back on defense. This is trouble. Oh, no foul call. Tip. Kessler recovers it. Kessler now across the lane. Kessler had it bothered and blocked. Johnson comes away with it. Here comes Pace running. Justin Johnson running on the break all the way. Ball in the China shot. Get this shot out of here. Emory Lanier with the rejection. Out of bounds. Off of Pace. Woodward ball. Been waiting for it all night. Been I knew it was coming. All night. He just needed a play like that. We got to get Joe stretched out at halftime. <laughs> get him some ice. Something cold to drink. Timeout call by Sharman White and Pace. A 6-0 run from Woodward Academy, and they retake the lead 22 to 21. You see Justin Johnson on the SUV TV instant replay. Look at Emory Lanier trailing the play though. He sized them up. Meet me at the backboard. And don't be late. Look at how fast he's running here. Yeah. Let's keep something in perspective, though. Last yeah. night at this time, Justin Johnson was playing a football game. Yeah. And, and yeah. Give the young man some credit for putting the putting them on, lacing them up, and getting out here when oh, I love he it. knows his team needs him. I, I love yeah, it. Exactly. His team I love needs him. I love it. Lanier across the timeline. Woodward Academy in the middle of a 6-0 run. They're in possession. Oh, we're in a little matchup right here. Got to get to the corners. Lanier open, three, caroms off. Cleveland skies and gets the rebound. Two minutes. Cleveland gets to a spot, jumper, no. Whitmore comes away with it. Tricky dribble goes behind the back. They hit heads, rebound comes up. Cole Middleton will dunk this home. Twenty-three, twenty-two. 95 seconds remaining. Now the pace crowd lightly chants defense. Mm -hmm. I thought they would be just a little bit heavier. They don't want to get outdone. Floater, Rashard. Oh, good. Nice. Will Rashard has came on now and show you why they like him. He now has seven in the quarter, nine in the game. 75 seconds remaining. Johnson worked on by Whitmore. Comes back out, and they'll set it up. So right now, these minutes from White, vital for Johnson. Yes. Minenberg dumped it off. Looked like a kick. Shot clock is at two. Shot clock is at one. A shot clock violation. I know this is going to be a popular thing to say, but you might want to look at getting Richard out of the game right here with a minute to go in the quarter. And, and you because do not want to picking up yeah. that third one. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you know, you're, you're not going to win the game here on this possession, but you could put yourself in a really tough spot. It's really you pick it. one up. It's almost like borrowed time right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. But he has been vital for you in this quarter. In the corner, Rashard a three, no rebound. Middleton, final 36 seconds. Five second difference between game and shot. Madison Durr into the forecourt. Durr skips it to the corner. Caught there by Adams. 15 and a steal. Shot clock is off. They can hold for the final shot. Kessler stops. Oh, nice. oh show me. Fish in a barrel. Good. Oh. Walker Kessler. Read the Durr. Five seconds. Durr wants a screen. He held it too long. They showed on him. He forces up. Oh, my. A foul called on Will Richard on a three attempt. And Madison Durr will be going to the free throw line. They're kids, no. fellas. The foul called on 10. Michael Whitmore. Woo. Everybody just took a deep breath right there. Take a look at our SUV TV instant replay. 
Oh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure. Don't tell anybody. I saw don't. a foul either way. Don't tell anybody. I want to watch a young man play the second half. Sir, free throw. Ball don't lie. Russ, referee saw ghost right there. Point five on the clock, and that's what Michael Whitmore is talking to him about. Did you just say the referee saw a ghost? He saw a ghost. Oh, okay. <laughs> like Sam Donald. That's all right. I'm a Bills fan. Everybody knows that. What's that reminds me of that 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 uh Geico commercial. <laughs> yeah, Excuse me. The uh, insurance commercial with the spirit and the soul yeah. and the. We don't yeah. need no ghost to beat that cat. <laughs> 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 One more coming for Madison Durr. Ball don't lie. One of three. We are at the end of a thrilling first half between Pace and Woodward. The Academies, Woodward 26, Pace 24. We'll throw it to the game day group right here. You're watching the Hawks Nation Tip-Off Classic exclusively on SUV TV. SUV TV broadcast of the Hawks Naismith Tip Off Classic is brought to you by Atlanta Tip Off Club, Nike, Ken Nugent Attorneys at Law, Formetco Sports, The Oaks Course, and CBA Sports. towards the lane and throws it down. That's what the crowd had been waiting on. A fantastic dunk coming in by Williamson. Trent, off balance jumper. Nails it. Pierre to Gary Trent Jr. Oh my goodness. That's how you end the game, folks. Back to the SUV TV halftime show. Hassan Khan alongside Daryl LaBerry and Stephen Cox. And if you guys were watching the first half, we don't have to tell you how exciting and how energy filled this auditorium, this gymnasium is right now. It's a big time atmosphere here tonight. Um, the crowd is hanging on every play. Uh, both student sections are unbelievable. Uh, Woodward might actually have more students here than Pace, which is surprising, but you know, they're in unison, they're doing different chants. So just makes for a great environment, and both teams are playing extremely hard. Looked a little rusty early, uh, but I'm expecting a great second half. Yeah, I think that it's come down to point guard play, right? So, you know, Pace, Pace has four really good players, and, and Durr is doing a good job of the point. But I think the X factor for the game in this half has been Whitmore. He's the only really true point guard on the floor right now. He's small, but the intangibles that come along with being a point guard is, I think, why Woodward has a little bit of the advantage right now. Uh, obviously, Kessler's on the boards like crazy. Uh, and, 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 and Pace has been able to get some easy deuces in transition. A lot of their stuff has come in transition. That's where they're getting a majority of their points. Um, I just think, you know, when you get into January and February, when you're playing in, in, in the postseason, you're playing against reason play, you got to execute on the offensive end a little bit tighter. And it's early in the season, too, so there's room for improvement. Yep. Very close game going here into the second half. If you're the coach on either side, on each team, what are some halftime adjustments that you guys are making? Well, if uh, Pace is going to continue to play that zone, um, I would just throw the ball to Walker Kessler right there in the heart of the zone, you know, in that little gray area in between the free throw line and the rim. He's just too big and skilled. When he catches the ball there, I think they have absolutely no answer for him. Um, if I'm Pace offensively, 
Uh, I want to kind of try to space those guys out, put Walker Kessler on some ball screens, keep him away from the rim for rebounding purposes and for blocking shots purposes, um, and try to make the game a little bit more up-tempo. I think the slower the pace, the more under control the tempo, that favors Woodward, in my opinion, because they have guys who can make shots from the perimeter. And then you have the best player in the game, who is Walker Kessel, who is so skilled. Yeah, no, it, the Woodward transition defense is lackluster right now. Obviously tightening that up on that. Obviously getting shot selection sometimes leads to Pace's offensive output in transition. Uh, and then you can see, like, when, 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 when Woodward is on defense and one of the four guys don't catch it, you can tell Woodward's eyes just light up because they're sending two guys at the ball trying to get a deflection, trying to get a steal, trying to create early offense. So, you know, uh, Woodward's defensive transition and then the offensive end, again, on, on paces on the half court, you know, being able to execute, run their stuff against whatever defense Woodward, I think they're playing man, but, but, but being able to turn, you know, score on the offensive end in the half court for pace. We've been talking a lot about Walker Kessler and the impact that he's been having. Uh, we already know he's a great guy. Good player, seven feet tall, coming into UNC. Was on the, the laboratory here on SUV TV. He was, he was. Uh, but what are some, who are some other players, who are some dark horses that we haven't really been talking about, we really haven't been mentioning that you guys could see stepping up in the second half for either side? For Woodward, uh, it's going to be Emery Lanier and Will Richard. Will Richard actually made some threes and uh, had a couple transition plays, a nice little floater on a baseline. Emery Lanier didn't quite get into the offensive flow, but he's a very talented player. Led his team to a state championship last year, was the leading scorer on the team. So he's very capable, but it's you know, a new season, new team, new state. So he's trying to kind of find his field, find his niche on this particular team. Uh, when you go to pace, I think um, Middleton has to play a little bit better. Uh, they, if he can find a way to pull uh, Walker Kessler away from the rim and use his ball handling ability uh, and be a pick and pop guy, uh, that would be beneficial to them. And then Cleveland's gonna have to play a little bit better. you know. He's one of the higher-ranked guys in the state, but he has to be able to find a way to score in transition. Uh, sorry, not in transition, but in the half court, whether it's making jump shots or whether it's getting to the rim and finishing over contact. He was really good in transition, but he has to do a better job in the half court. And not to be redundant, but uh, Lomax for Woodward, uh, again, is I think, in my opinion, he's the only true point guard on the floor right now. It's early in the season as well. Um, you know, so he's been able to move the ball. He's quick. He's hawking the ball. He's deep, creating defensive problems sometimes for pace. And then, uh, you know, if any time Pace outside of their four top guys can get a bucket, Ben Crawford hit a deuce uh, on the baseline, number zero for Pace. I don't even know his name. He's not even on the roster. Hit a three in the corner. So anytime one of the top four guys from Pace is able to give some offensive output, that's a positive for them. And because, you know, they sub one guy out, now they got three guys. And so, you know, the, the bench for Pace is is, is – is very thin, so anytime they can get a, a, another guy coming in to be able to produce, it's always a plus. So we've already talked about the environment here. It's very loud. It's very eccentric. Being a, a young player, I know when you get older, you kind of get used to the crowd and d don't let it get inside your head, but being a younger player in high school, a teenager, does that get inside your head? Uh, it's hard not to get caught up in the moment. Uh, like I said, both teams are smaller private schools. They don't normally play in front of crowds like this, environments like this. So whoever can handle that best, kind of control their emotions, slow the game down, play their tempo, play their style, uh, will most likely come out with the win tonight. But, but to answer your question, the only way that you get more comfortable in these situations is through experience and through playing in them. Uh, this is very unique for both teams, uh, both coaching staffs. Uh, but I think the second half, they'll calm down and play a little bit, a little bit less frenetic. I don't anticipate it being a problem for Woodward because, you know, uh, Lanier's a senior, Kessler's a senior, Whitmore's a senior, uh, you know, and then Pace is in their home environment too. It's early in the season, so, yeah, maybe a little bit. Uh, kudos to Lanier for the massive block late in the second half. Big time. You know, play. Richard came out with a steal, missed a bucket, quick transition back because Pace is really good in transition. Lanier came out of freaking nowhere and just blocked it and the crowd went crazy. So that was a great moment, a great play. Uh, so... It was, it was a good play in, in this game thus far. Real briefly, we got to wrap up here, but real quick, second half, who are you guys picking to win this game? Uh, I'm going to go with Woodward. Um, I just think they'll find a way to get Kessler the ball more, and I don't think they have any answer for him. Uh, and I think they'll change things up defensively, and if you can slow pace down and transition, like you said, they just have really struggled to score in the half court. I, and, and I agree. I just don't know if Woodward can make the adjustments to, to catch up with Pace's transition. 
you know, Pace gets a, tri a stop or two. It's an easy deuce at the other end. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Pace just to be ar arbitrary to a certain <laughs> degree. But And it's their home crowd. It's their place. So we'll go with Pace. And that'll do it for the halftime show here at SUV TV. The second half is coming up between Pace and Woodward Academy. Stick around. inside the in Inman Center on the campus of Pace Academy. Joel Hilson, Lewis Preston, and Russ Triaga. Glad that you're with us. We get ready for the second half, 26 to 24. Woodward Academy with the lead. The game has been a little bit more lively than the scoring would indicate. First half thoughts. For me, it, it was a, a tale of almost two quarters. Uh, Woodward Academy was real smooth in the first quarter, getting a lot of what they wanted. They still scored in the second quarter, but they had to work much harder for it. I'm really impressed with the perimeter defense that Woodward displays. I'll tell you this, I'm really impressed with Castle. His his footwork, his balance doesn't get too rattled. Also really impressed with the fact that Pace Academy has nine assists on nine made baskets. You know? So once again, sharing the basketball, it'll be very interesting now to see who's going to step up. Durr, to me, has got to do a little bit more offensively to help uh, Pace Academy kind of neutralize what Rashad has done for Woodward. I think you're just trying to get on Joel's good side since uh, you know uh, assists are his favorite stat. He tried, didn't he? Woodward in black, Pace in white. The thing that stood out for me, no double-figure scores from anyone. Walker Kessler, 9.6 rebounds. Mm -hmm and then Cole Middleton and Matthew Cleveland, eight points each for Pace Academy. The game has felt a lot more lively than the score has indicated. 16 and eight, the line score for Pace in that first half. 14 and 12, the line score for Woodward in that first half. Reed, foul line jumper is good. Even ball game. Mm -hmm. And now Cole Middleton getting helped up. It is, excuse me, Matt Cleveland. Madison Durr, Matt Cleveland, Cole Middleton, Josh Reed, and Josh Minneberg. The five on the floor to start this second half for Pace Academy. Will Richard, Emery Lanier, Walker Kessler, Michael Whitmore, and Will Demarest for Woodward Academy. You know, I meant to have some fun with you, Lou. Yeah. Woodward Academy's got some Jumpman unis on. I'll see it. Kessler catches inside out, back out to Whitmore. Three ball, bottom of the net. A three from Michael Whitmore. I might have to, uh, I might have to talk to Blake Johnson, a Woodward Academy alum, in regards to getting into the equipment room. Cleveland, no. Rebound off to Walker Kessler, who shows the versatility, put it on the floor, but it was poked away from Cleveland from behind. Cleveland drives, flying, a blocking foul called on Emery Lanier. That's a great idea there by Emery Lanier, trying to step up and get the play over with and draw that charge way out in front of the basket. It's a good idea. It was a two-on-one. He wasn't going to be able to do anything at the rim there. Right. Just didn't go his way. It'll be baseline out of bounds. Cole Middleton will be the trigger. 30 on the shot clock. 6.43, third quarter. Middleton. I thought, it, I thought it was going to shoot two. Called it on the floor. Minneberg picked up by Rashard. Rashard, remember, two fouls. Middleton drives. It's cut off by Kessler. He's still in the paint. Three second violation. Yeah. Call. It is game number eight of eight on the day here from the Hogs Naismith tip off classic. We've had some pretty good ones. Denmark come from behind, fashion over Maynard Jackson, 55 52. And the Holy Innocents girls defeated Marietta 63 to 29. Glen Hills defeated Mount Bethel in overtime 49 to 47, a game that was played without the shot clock. Green Forest came from behind and defeated St. Pius in boys' action 69 to 55. 
Westlake girls routed Spalding 69 to 25. Tri-City boys took care of Westlake 87 to 72. St. Francis held off Langston Hughes 67 to 62. And now Pace Academy and Woodward on the nightcap. It's 29. 26 with two minutes gone in his third quarter. Joel Hilsman, Lewis Preston, mm. Russ Triaga, and that is Cole Middleton with the hoop. It's a nice move by Middleton right there, going underneath and coming back around using that left hand. That's a good finish. Yeah, much Great needed. Finish. Points around the basket. Kessler pump fake, and now in the corner to Demarest. Demarest drives, puts it up. Demarest, no, tip follow. Cleveland comes away with the defensive rebound. Keeps the dribble alive and brings it into the full court. Now he chucks it into the corner. Miniburg, the read, open, left wing, three. Hill of the rim, long rebound by Will Richard. And here comes Richard running. Richard going to attack all the way. Left hand, good. Will Richard. <laughs> Miniburg had it knocked away. Will Richard has turned it on, fellas. He really Seven has. points in that second quarter to get him going. He now has in double figures mm -hmm. with 11. And he Love continues it. to create live ball turnovers and turning them into points at the other end. Inbound back out now. And here is Reed. Reed worked on defensively by Demares. Jumps it down low in a steal. Here comes Woodward running in this way. Rashard stops, finds the three-point line. Three is off. Board down to Madison Durr. I'm waiting on Madison Durr to kind of get going. Middleton, a move, Ooh. layup, it fell off. Rashard on the glass. And now Andrew Smith into the contest. Here's Whitmore. Whitmore on the attack to Kessler. Up, dunked it home. Offensive foul. On Whitmore. Michael Whitmore. That's where, as time goes on, Whitmore's just going to realize once he gets near the free throw line, just toss it up at the rim. Exactly. Kessler's right there. He doesn't even need to take another. Right there. Just toss it up at the rim and let the big fella just catch it and flush it. It's an easy call. It's an easy call in my book. You can see Kessler's head drop almost as if to say, hey, I'm here. I'm at the spot. Toss it up. I'll go get it. Whitmore walking back down this way, patted himself on the chest, as in to say, my fault. Cleveland step back. No. Oh Richard rebound. He has picked it up a notch. Kessler catches and now gives it back to Whitmore. They'll run their set. Four and a half to go. Third quarter. Why does it seem like when the game is good, the clock just moves quicker? Because the referees aren't involved. Kessler knocked away by Reed, a foul call on Josh Reed, the sophomore. See, the problem here is when you foul Kessler, yeah. he's going to step up to the line and knock him down. Well, he struggled so far today now. Mm -hmm. He is uh, one of four from the free throw line in the contest these, so far. These two are going in, Joe. All right. And the broadcaster jinx does not come off of Russ Triana. <laughs> in the inverted form. We'll give you halfway there. 32-28. <laughs> you ought to see Coach Triaga's face. <laughs> nobody's just, nobody's on my team. Cleveland underneath the dirt. Dirt back over. Here's Reed. Reed dribbles in. Elbow jumper. No mm. and a whistle. Foul on the shot. the official looking uh -oh. it is on 10 okay so he called it on Michael Whitmore a lot of discussion over there at that table this crew referees they, they it is a good crew it is an experienced group seems to be a little bit of a communication issue with the table coach Ambler's just putting his two cents in down there right now just asking questions as politely as possible doesn't look like anybody's left here Joe oh no you want to know you want to know something funny I bet, oh. you, I bet you we don't get 62 fouls called in the last two games. 91 free throw. And I, I hate to bring this up, but I would call the game where he had 84 free throws or something like that. Wait, you had 92 free throws in the last game? No, two games, two games. Two games, two games ago. ago. Oh. I wonder why I got to eat twice. <laughs> <laughs> 
Reed, no good on the free throw. <laughs> Up ahead, three ball, Nathan Barrow, no, rebound comes off, and now here is Cleveland. Matthew Cleveland had it taken away. Steal. The thief will rebound Whitmore. Whitmore on the penetrate, in the corner, set fire, no. Escape from a pull up, good from Will Rousseau. As we wind through the last quarter and a half of this game, Matthew Cleveland has got to make better decisions in between the three point lines. Yeah. He's coming down, he's out of control. Mm -hmm. He's got to get it, just get his head up, advance the ball in the air, and chase it, and it'll come back to him, and he'll get a much better look. This Woodward, this Woodward uh, fan base. He's letting it be known. Yeah, I think they're celebrating. Academy's house. They're celebrating the Georgia. What do they win the SEC East today? I think that's really what that's uh, all about. No, that's about Woodward right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I just assumed everybody in Georgia was cheering for the University of Georgia today. What? No, this is going to be a battle of our students versus your students. You hear that? We can't hear you. And the Pace students seem to be taking the loss in stride at the moment. They haven't responded with anything. I mean, they had that half-hearted defensive chant earlier. 34 to 28 with 338 in the third quarter. Glad that you were with us. Wherever you are, and a turnover out of the timeout. Coach Sharman White puts his hands on his hips. He looks up and down that sideline. <laughs> Anthony Thomas, the Woodward Academy alum, crosses his arms and looks up at that scoreboard. He likes what he sees right now, a six-point lead with 3.31 to go. No turnover, out of bounds, off of Woodward. Madison Durr to the elbow. Cole Middleton, 16-footer. It is off. Tip, rebound underneath Minneberg wow. out of the guard spot and score. Shortest his, play on the floor. His first right, steal, right. though, comes on an offensive rebound and second chance opportunity. Like we've said all along, you get Kessler away from the basket, and it's just best man wins down there once he's out of the out of the pitcher. Kessler has it, turns, one dribble. It did the shot out of Hill. Middleton with the block on Kessler, recovered by Whitmore. Whitmore on the attack, across in the corner. Rashard, a three on the way. It is off. The board is pulled down by Madison Durr. Lead pass up to Justin Johnson. Johnson, big body, gives it to Middleton. Middleton holds it with 2.40 to go. Minneberg in the corner. Durr picked up by Whitmore. Durr seems to be a little gunshot. Minneberg is not bottom. Yep. But a better possession there. Yep. A lot That's of touches. Better. Ball switch sides twice. You're generally going to get what you want. Well, you get a ball to go from one side to the other and back to the original side, usually it ends up being an open shot. That's usually money at the high school level. 34-33. Ball knocked away. And the Pace Academy student section is like, whatever you can do, I can do better. Yeah, they just came alive on that last one. 34-33, 207 to go. Looks, looks, inbound to Kessler. The Whitmore coming up on two minutes to go, third quarter. Whitmore, a deep three. A no, shot. rebound, Rashard underneath. Really impressed by, by this recharge here. 36-33, 100 seconds. Durr drives, layup, no, he was fouled by Kessler. That's a really nice attack there by Durr. Pick up Kessler's second foul. I'd like to see it again. Next possession, yes. you, you still got time to, to put him under some duress. You got to continue to attack. You're in a one-possession game. Make these free throws, next offensive possession. Right back at Kessler. You got to keep him involved in the play. 36 33, 139, and Madison Durr free throw, no nope. mm. good. <laughs> Madison Durr has struggled on the day. He has one point. He's one of four from the free throw line. And the home team is trailing. Here he's stealing minutes. <coughs> Kessler will take a seat. Look for Coach White to jump up into some pressure here. 
Kessler a quiet night, if I could so say myself, but he still got a double-double. You got Kessler out of the game, wouldn't be surprised. See a little extended 1-2-2, one, 1-3-1. Two, two, one, one. Look here. Working on the double-double. He's got seven points. Second free throw from Durr is no good. Seven rebounds, excuse me. Foul offensive on Will Richard. That is his third. Thought he got fouled on the rebound first, but once again. I actually think he got fouled by both players yeah. in the trap. Yeah. And then the foul went against him. They always say it's usually the second one that they see. Yeah. I guess in this case it was the third one. <laughs> Get it in, they fight for it. Cleveland underneath, up. Too many steps, a traveling violation. Here comes the pressure. Yeah. I figured once Kessler came out of the game. Uh, wanna know how I knew that, Lou? Yeah. I, I know what uh, Coach White's call is for no press. Richard, no. Whitmore recovers, new clock. Rashard on the attack. Oh, that's a charge. Offensive foul. That's number four. And that is his fourth foul. A little too aggressive in that possession, I think, for Will Rashard. Now, I think we need to spend a little time out when we get to the end of the quarter. Talking about all the things Minneberg's done today yeah. to help Pace. He's knocked down shots. Yeah. He's defended. He's created turnovers. He just drew a charge. He's playing heavy minutes. He, he give this young man some credit. The smallest kid on the floor doing nothing but good things. Offensive rebounds, stick back. You like to say it, Coach Preston, how can you affect the game without scoring? I say and it all I the think time. Minneberg is showing you how you can do that. And then he's got some timely Ooh. shots. And that's a timely move by Cole Middleton. Cole Middleton, you know what? We got two big guys that are really nimble on their feet. Uh huh. The whistle's now beginning to pick up. That'll only be the second team foul on pace. 36-35, a one-point game right now for Woodward. And they are in possession. Shot clock at 30, 43 on the game clock. Whitmore receives the inbound pass, comes across the timeline. It'll be picked up by Miniburg. Did everything but finish the shot. Yeah, let's not us forget here now. Mm -hmm. uh, Pace is in the bonus here for the rest of yeah. his possession and the whole fourth the rest quarter. Of the game. Yeah. yeah, they're shooting free throws the remainder of the way. So if they attack, it plays to their advantage. They can hold for one shot. 36-35. Madison Durr picked up the dribble, goes on the back to Middleton. They came away and knocked it away. Good backside defense, Demarest. Here comes Whitmore. Whitmore, stop. 13-footer. Hill of the rim, no. Rebound, put back up. It fell off. Whitmore, back up, no. Fight for it. No, block. Multiple chances. And that will be the end of the third quarter. Buckle up. We move to the fourth. 36-35. Whitmore on pace. Timeout right here. The SUV. TV.com. This SUV TV broadcast of the Hawks Naismith Tip Off Classic is brought to you by Atlanta Tip Off Club, Nike, Ken Nugent Attorneys at Law. For Metco Sports, The Oaks Course, and CBA Sports.
The fourth and final frame is in front of us from the Hawks Naismith Tip-Off Classic. Joel Hilsman, Russ Triaga, Lewis Preston, glad that you're with us. Woodward Academy and Pace in the fourth quarter. Woodward is moving left to right. They're in the black. Pace, the home team, in the white. And a foul call. And let's check it. It'll be on Pace. It'll only be the third. Foul call on Matt Cleveland. Cleveland with eight points in the contest. And he has 10 boards. Whitmore on the attack in the corner. Good ball movement. Three ball open bottom. They deserve that. Andrew Nye off the bench and into the scorebook with a big time three ball. Four point Woodward lead. And that's what happens when you get great ball movement right there, which leads to an open shot. Nine times out of ten, knock it down. Madison Durr, I miss, mentioned he'd been gun shy. No good. Middleton fight for it. Oh, my. I don't see a foul call here. Are you going to call this on Kessler? I just didn't see the foul. Foul on Demarest. Cole Middleton will go to the free throw line. He's two of two on the day. Middleton with 12 points in the contest. The Woodward crowd made some noise. It didn't do any good. He made the free throw. 11 assists on 14 made baskets for Pace Academy, just to echo your theme from their first half performance. I mean, I mean, I'm walking out of here just as I'm watching this, I'm becoming more and more impressed with Cole Middleton. He's playing big. Exactly. He is not backing down from the challenge at all. Coach Thomas gives the set. Here comes Lanier. Gives the screen. Whitmore to Kessler. Kessler put it on the floor. Turn, jump, hook. Wow. No. He almost at one point was triple team. Yeah. Durr goes baseline, kick out, Minneberg, escape dribble, now hesitates, back out, top side, Durr, three ball, in and out. Durr right now needs to knock down shots, yeah. showing a little bit of a liability. He's been open a couple of times, he's been gun shy, he struggled one of five from the free throw line. And you can see his body language, he is frustrated, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, talking to himself, just really, really fighting through it, he's just got to settle in and realize He's been through this many times in his high school career. Just go ahead and do what you do and make open looks. I've always said this. If you're a shooter, you got to have a short-term memory. Sometimes I think shooters don't have any memory. No. I mean, you don't even have a short-term yeah. memory. They, just, they don't even remember when they missed. They, they'll, they'll tell you they didn't miss. That's what Jesus shows for us, a.k.a. Ray Allen. <laughs> <laughs> He didn't miss that much, though. The no. greatest <laughs> shooter in the history of the NBA. Oh, oh here no, we you're going to start an argument. Three ball, nine, no. Rebound, Cleveland in transition. Attacks, up. That's a block. Offensive oh. foul, Matt Cleveland. That, that is block. his first, his second, excuse me. Take another look at this one, Coach. I thought he was still moving. He was. Yeah. Coach, that's not close. No. Yeah, he was moving with both feet. Fourth team five. In my next life, I'm going to be an official. I don't know. I don't know if I could do that. You know I'm just kidding on that comment. <laughs> Lanier, corner three. No. Coach Triaga, you'll, you'll learn when to respond and when not to respond. Sometimes you just got to let it go. Yeah, you yeah. just you let it marinate, and he'll figure out what he said. I thought he was going to say something like, well, they get paid well. No. No. He no. has been holding an official's camp every year. <laughs> he just doesn't attend. <laughs> it's there. 
for anybody who wants to come. He won't be there, but it, it's there for you. <laughs> I have my own officials camp that I don't attend. That's a good I don't, one. I don't, I don't believe that, and I don't want to hear any more about you it. Dare. We are bringing fire here in this heated environment in the Inman Center. <laughs> Madison Dirk free throw is good. How did, how did we get here? 39-38. Sad part is the people that are listening don't really realize that between the three of us, we can't have two consecutive serious thoughts. <laughs> Triaga is officially comfortable. Exactly. Free throw is good. <laughs> I can seriously tell you we're in a tie ball game. 39-39. Whitmore across the timeline. Lanier, Kessler, Nye, and Demarest. The five on the floor for Woodward. Minneberg, Durr, Reed, Middleton, and Cleveland. The five on the floor for Pace mm -hmm. and a whistle. So, Coach Ludy, are you surprised at all? We, we haven't seen, even with this zone or mm -hmm. in a different – things that they're trying to do nothing specifically set to get Kessler the ball at a particular spot on the floor or in a, in a set with movement I, I just feel like he's had to go and get everything in this whole second half nothing's been brought to it yeah and I think as you start to look when uh, when pace was in their two three zone I think he's the guy you got to put up in the middle yeah absolutely even if he is going to be surrounded, mm -hmm. he can catch, pitch it out, and reset and get it back. All you got to do is have your hands ready to catch and shoot. Emery Lanier makes the free throw. Just to update you, this is a different classification contest. Pace in 3A, Woodward in 4A. The academies of Fulton County. Durr drives good. He needed that for his confidence. He did. He got in there and had a nice soft finish there. And maybe he can get going here. He's clapping his hands and, and feel a little bit of relief there. They're going to need him coming down the stretch. Three That's minutes gone. Basket. That's Durr's first basket. First basket, yes. Wow. He, ha he has five points in the contest. Will Richard approaches the scorer's table. Demarest lost it out of bounds off a of pace. Possession will stay with Woodward. And Demarest now will take a seat, and Coach Anthony Thomas says, all right, young man, you've got four fouls. you got to go the rest of the way, 440. Yeah, I think Coach Thomas is playing this right. This is right about the time. Tie game, four and a half minutes. You know, he, he, he believes in that young man, and he, he needs him on the floor, and it's ride or die time with him. Inbound to Kessler and a foul call. That will be the sixth on pace. Hmm. That is on Josh Reed. A sophomore through three quarters pace was shooting at 39%. Woodward at 32%. Whitmore attacks the baseline, kick to the cross. The three from Lanier is no good. Rashard with the offensive rebound. Second chance opportunity for the War Eagles. Oh, drive, layup, good. Let me get some butter with that roll. Kessler did a great job of posting up and clearing up that alley for him. The Woodward crowd erupts. Foul call on pace. It's their seven. That was doing with the offensive. You know, I just want to go back and just as we've been light and talking about the Woodward Academy being Bulldog fans. That's an odd day if you're a War Eagle mascot, though, right? <laughs> uh, oh. Did you sit there and think about that, or did yes. that just come to you? It yes. just came to me when I said the War Eagle. Oh, there he goes. Yeah, that's what did it. And then I look up, and you got that guy over there with the basketball, <laughs> the Bulldogs on, Bulldog shirt. Lanier swings it, open, Richard, three, caroms off the back of the rim. Middleton soars and gets the board and gives it over to Johnson. Halfway gone in this fourth and final frame, 43-41. And a timeout call by Pace. It will be a full timeout with 347 remaining in the contest. Attorney Ken Nugent is proud to partner with the Hawks Naismith Classic for the score for scholarship program. 
Ken Nugent will donate $1 for every point scored during the tip-off classic, benefiting the Atlanta Hawks Foundation mission to increase access to the game. Whether it's a crash, slip and fall, attorney Ken Nugent, one call, that's all. Russ, as we look at the last three minutes and 47 seconds of this game, what do you think, you know, what we need to do, especially with Kessler, let's say Pace comes out in the 2-3 zone. What would yeah. you like to see them Yeah, do? even with the 2-3 zone, empty side ball screen. Yeah. I, I, I just think they need to do something to make the defense react before he touches the ball mm -hmm. and then move the ball, let him reset, and I think he can get it in a position then where he can get comfortable and get a good look. It's, it's very simple to surround a guy when we're looking at him at, you know, all the way down the floor trying to force the ball into him. Get him involved in doing something and then reset and, and move the ball. Switch sides with the ball. Yeah. Uh, again, both teams are shooting free throws for the rest of the game. Neither team has shot the ball particularly well from the perimeter. Uh, the rest of this game needs to be played below the foul line and, and by ma making free throws. Johnson has it and gives it to Minneberg in the corner. Five on the 30. Got to watch the clock. Cleveland stop three to beat the horn. Hill of the rim, no. Rebound, Reed up and in. Josh Reed. Huge rebound and step back right there by Reed. Huge. I mean, we're down to a three-minute game, really. It's it's it doesn't matter yeah. what's happened leading up to now. It's 43 all and we got 305 to go. As one broadcaster used to say, nothing has been decided. Turning, fading. Oh, oh that's just pretty. That wow. is just Walker Kessler doing Walker Kessler thing. Oh. Cleveland carried, no call, turns, score, shot, no, back tap. Lanier comes away with it and he'll push it in transition. See, he needs to pull it right out and go right back to the same set. Corner, three, no, rebound, ripped off by Middleton. But now we'll see the shot clock come into effect. You can't pull it back and now take the whole air out of the gym. Yep. No Hoover uprights allowed. Corner, three, read, no, Richard on the glass. Only Pace Academy players should be shooting threes or Minimer. That's it. <laughs> Coach White just grimaced at that missed yeah. shot attempt. Foul call. Will it be on the shot? If it's on the shot, it will be two. If it's on the floor, it's the one and one. It is called on Minimer a block. So it is one and one. Interesting. That's this vital. Is, this is winning time. This is absolutely not hero time. Exactly. And I'm seeing multiple players out here trying to be the hero, trying to get the prom date by making the big shot. They need to make winning basketball plays. Look at Dr. Ross bringing up prom date. Maybe I should have said homecoming. No, <laughs> same <laughs> difference. No, same, you're right. Whitmore, no on the front end of the one and one. The rebound is corralled by Middleton, who lost it. A steal. Kessler, dunked it home. Walker Kessler. Four-point game. Two minutes. Here's Reed at the top. He spins it over to the left. Now here's Durr. Durr swooping across the lane, dumped it off in a dunk. Cole Middleton. Buckle up. 152. And guess what? There's a shot clock. You can't sit on the basketball. You've got to play basketball. 105 seconds. Two point game with more across 20 on the 30. Kessler turns three. Bottom. Oh. Bang. <laughs> Bang, wow. bang, give him all three of them. Walker Kessler coming to life. Five-point game. He has seven in this fourth quarter. Foul call, Emily Lanier, the guilty party. It is truly amazing what happens when you put the ball in your best player's hands. Yep. I, I just can't say it enough. Every this is time. high school basketball. He is the best player on the court, and he needs the ball. I believe he scored their last seven points. Yes. It has. Indeed. Woodward Academy fans bringing out the overrated chant. And they're going for Matthew Cleveland, who's at the free throw line. Cleveland, free throw. No good. No 
wow. massive miss from Matthew Cleveland. Eight points in the game, all eight of them in the first quarter. Nothing since then. What did Woodward and Coach Anthony Thomas do to Cole Middleton? He has 10 plus rebounds. I think they just took him through some different bodies out of Put him in different situations. I think he's playing a little bit out of control at times as well. Cleveland free throw is good. 50 to 46 with 84 seconds. Substitution now. Nye will come in. And Ballou will go out. 50 to 46. Pace will pick up full court. Rashard is the inbounder in the Lanier. Whitmore will break the timeline. Minnebert oh, puts ah. it away. Nye recovers. Clock is at 22. Corner, three to put him away. No. Rebound. Knocked away. Taken away by Kessler. He lost it. Reed gets it up to Cole Middleton. Middleton now running in transition. We come up on a minute to go. Middleton had it knocked away. Recovered. Now cross court. Minneberg could not pull it. Attack down low. Up to Reed. Get this shot out of here. Oh, my. A oh, foul man. called on Walker Kessler. You might want to check the air in the basketball. He blocked that. Looked like it was all ball. Let's see what our SUV TV instant replay says. Oh, maybe uh, on the arm. No. Nope. No maybe there. Right. That is not a foul. But go back to the other end. Yep. Another Woodward player taking an ill-advised shot. Three-pointer. There's about 17 on the shot clock. He got a four-point lead with a minute left. And it's frustrating, guys. It's frustrating. And I'm sure they're going to hear about it when they sit down and watch the film here, and they're just making this game much more difficult than it needs to be. 58 yep. and 7, 10 seconds is a three-point game. If he makes the free throw, it's a one-point game. Pace does not have to foul because of the shot clock. I've always said this is a great time for learning and teachable moments, right? Some of the ill-advised shots are great teachable moments. But now, I'm not disputing. I'll, I'll say I'm playing devil advocate. He pulled that, but you got the shot clock. Now, the ill-advised shot actually works in Woodward Academy's favor. They've got the ball. They've got the lead. And there I say, two for one. And they don't even need it. Well, in, in, a, in a perfect world, they are in a two for one. But based on the scenario, there's going to be more than three possessions in this game. Because if they can score here and push it out beyond a possession and, and, and it comes back the other way, Pace is going to foul if they score. Now, if they don't score and Pace ties it up, then it is a true two-for-one. But I think, you know, we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves. I, I, I love the idea that they can't help hold the ball and Pace has to play the rest of the game out and Woodward has to play the rest of the game out. That's a given, and, and that's how it should be. I don't foul here, though. No. Clock no. goes down to 28. I don't foul. I try to get the defense to be rewarded with the shot clock. Force him into a bad shot. He broke through. Here comes Whitmore, and it's knocked away. It did not hit the rim. Lanier has it. 15 on the 30. 43 on the game. Whitmore. Hesitates, goes baseline, step back, Michael Whitmore, jumper oh, bottom, man. ice water in the young man's lane. Now you got to go. Four-point game, Middleton at the top, 24 on the clock. There's a three-second difference. Durr drives, no foul by Kessler. That's a bad call. Fifty-two, forty-eight. Massive, massive free throws coming for Madison Durr, who has struggled in the game. He is three of seven from the free throw line. He's made his last two, though. Massive major free throws with 24 and 8, 10 seconds. Good on the first. Three-point game. Now you make it, and now you play the foul game. Absolutely. And that's what Coach White's over there telling him to get up. Now, he may try to pressure till it comes into the front court. He may do that. But they, they definitely will go ahead and give the foul. Myself, I give it right away. Absolutely. I would give it right away because they're in a one and one. Yeah. Timeout call. Two-point game. 24 
and 8, 10 seconds, 52 Woodward, 50 pace. Glad so, that you were with us. So with a lot of, with, with 24 seconds. The Atlanta Hawks and Atlanta Tip-Off Club would like to thank their corporate partners and supporters whose contributions make the Hawks Nation Tip-Off Classic a memorable experience for the participating schools, student athletes, coaches, and fans. Supporters include Nike Basketball, Gatorade, Dick Sporting Goods, Jersey Mike, Papa John, Chick-fil-A, Formetco, Sports Image Georgia, SUV TV, Emory Healthcare, and the host, Pace Academy. Sorry about that, Coach. Oh, no, no, you're good. Got to so, pay the bills. So you could, in this situation right here, you probably want to get Kessler to the free throw line, yes. right? So you could come out with a hard face guard and a center fielder, leave the inbounder alone, and that will make Woodward bring the big fella down. They'll throw it up into the middle to get him the ball, and you can tag him right there. Yeah. He's coming right to half court. They got to get around him here. He can't let him run back towards the end line. Here you go. You got a good face guard. See if this is what Coach White's trying to get done here. Whitmore is the trigger, covered by Reed in the Lanier. They get the inbound. No foul yet. Up ahead to Nye. Nye holds it. And now the foul given by Cole Middleton with 19 and 2, 10 seconds. It's the one and one. And Andrew Nye is off the bench. He has three points in the contest. Is it one and one or shooting two? It's one and one. That does 19 foul on pace. It should be one and one. Did the ref give a two? Yeah. Oh, it's one and one. Good. Big, big three throw. So this three-point game super important that you get a double block out on Kessler here. You got to block down, and you got to get block outs from both ends. You can't let him get into the middle and keep That's this alive. Good. Nice free throw. Good. The clock is not running. In the corner, Minneberg, trap. Back out, steal by Whitmore. Whitmore coming, foul given in the backcourt by Cleveland. 54 to 50, how big are those free throws from Andrew Knott? And now the Woodward student section beginning to wave at the Pace Academy student section. <laughs> Actually, on. what's interesting right there was like they blew the whistle, they blew the horn because they couldn't hear it. Supposed to get somebody onto the floor. Coach Sharman White is, is discussing something, and he is upset with this official. He is really giving it to Mr. Official, and whatever the end result is, is not going to go in his favor. Sharman White really, really upset. Now he's coming to talk with Coach Anthony Thomas. Whitmore at the free throw line. That'll put it away. What a big, big half. Yeah. A big quarter for Whitmore. He has five in the quarter, eight and a half, 14 in the game, 55-50. No good. Rebound comes off. Durr quickly. Layup. Good. Timeout call. Three-point game. Play it to the very end. I don't know if you wanted to give that up that easy. No, exactly. I agree with you on that one. Pace Academy has St. Francis to look forward to. Holy Innocence, Westlake, a trip to the Chicago Elite Classic, the Next Level Classic Hoop Fest, St. Pius, and flying to the hoop. That's what Pace Academy has Woo. to look forward to this coming season on the schedule. So just a little uh, a note here. We get a loose ball tie-up. Possession arrow is going with Pace. They still have time to give a foul right away. Nothing's given. Nothing's been decided yet. As much as it, it, it looks bleak for them, and it, it really has not been decided yet. The only thing I'm unaware of, I'm unsure of, is timeout for man. It's interesting, Kessel had that run where he scored those seven points in a row. Then all of a sudden, bro, it's not giving them the ball. Yeah, it, 
I'm sure it's something that is completely unintentional. Yeah. But it, they have to have a little bit better awareness of. Foul given late. It's still going to be a solid day for Walker Kessler. 17 points, eight boards. Will Richard is going to go with the double-double. 15 points and 12 boards. This young man, Michael Whitmore, going to the free throw line. He has an opportunity for 15 and 16 points. Six boards to go with his four assists. Wow. So still those make three have carried the load. Still got to make one of these. Yes. Yeah. A little suspense. They go ahead and miss this one on purpose. Yep. And just stay right up. Don't foul. Missed it. Rebound. Durr. Heaves it long at the horn. And that is the ball game. The Woodward Academy. War Eagles come in the Pace Academy and knock them off in the finale of the Hawks Naismith Tip Off Classic by a final score of 56 to 52. What a ball game. What an atmosphere. What an event. Yeah. It was just great basketball from top to bottom. We knew that this finale would be a great one. It lived up to, to the billing and then some. Really impressed with Whitmore, Rashad, and then once again, Kessler just doing Kessler things. Roy Williams, Steve Robinson, Brad Frederick, Hubert Davis. Got to be very happy with what they got coming. I, I got to just. ATL. I got to just think one thing about this whole event over the course of two days with both the, 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 the boys' games and the girls' games. How many state champions did we see play this weekend? A lot. I mean, how, how, many, how many kids that are, that are going to go to college and have their, their uh, academics paid for because of their ability to play did we see this weekend? It's just uh, a terrific event. I've been completely thrilled to be a part of it, enjoyed every second of it. Uh, it was extremely well run, and uh, it, it was just a great event culminated by a terrific final game here. Woodward Academy, 17 points from Walker Kessler, 15 points from Michael Whitmore, 15 points and 12 boards from Will Rashard. For Pace Academy, 16 points and 10 rebounds from Cole Middleton, 9 points and 11 rebounds from Matthew Cleveland, 9 points from Madison Durr. Pace Academy falls to one and one on the season. Woodward Academy improves to two and zero oh on the young high school basketball season. And what a way in the second weekend of the GHSA basketball to close out the Hawks Naismith Tip Off Classic with such a prime event like this. I'm going to go ahead and chime in. And Dr. Ross, to kind of piggyback off what you said with this event, I think once again, as we've talked and made and alluded to Fulton County, right? Some really good basketball in Fulton County. Some really good basketball in DeKalb County. Some really good basketball in Gwinnett County. Some really good basketball in Cobb County. I just love how well run this event was, um, how smooth, uh, nothing crazy, but the most important thing is had an opportunity to once again showcase how good basketball is in this area and how much better it's going to continue to get. Yeah, I don't think you could find a better venue at Pace Academy by location and just the, the, the great environment and uh, the hospitality that everybody associated with Pace Academy has shown. The Atlanta Hawks' involvement is, is priceless. Um, in, in events like this. Uh, I don't know how many NBA franchises and organizations do this in their city or are willing to, to, to be a part of this. They bring in SUV TV, uh, just the, the premier entity when it comes to, you know, showcasing this kind of thing. And it, it's just first class, top to bottom. I, I, uh, uh, like I said, thrilled to be here, enjoyed every second of it, enjoyed uh, some fellowship with some great coaches and some great people um, throughout the course of the weekend. Uh, got to work with a, a lot of friends of mine and got to see some great basketball. 
some excellent coaching. Um, by and large, for the most part, the officiating was pretty solid as well. And, and, and just there's nothing but positives to come out of this event. And uh, it's just something that's going to continue to grow. It's going to continue to get better every year. And, and hopefully it stays right here at Pace Academy. Final box score, taking a look at that. Uh, I mean, some nice stuff there, but Woodward had their largest lead was six. Pace's largest lead was five. So we were nip and tuck the whole way with four lead changes. And uh, just a wonderful, wonderful night. And uh, just to piggyback off of what you said, Pace in the second year under Sherman White put together this event here at the Hawks Naismith tip Arm Classic. It was three years ago they started this. It was only one last year. It's two. This year is two. And we'll get to do it again with the Atlanta Hawks as the Atlanta Hawks and Atlanta Tip-Off Club will be back in the community on December the 13th and 14th at Norcross High School when they host the Hawks Naismith Holiday Classic. For game schedules and event information, visit hawksnaismith.com. And we hope to see you there as SUV TV will again have your exclusive coverage of the Hawks Naismith Holiday Classic. Coach Preston, it was good to get back in the saddle with you this season. Man, um, you ready? Um, once again, uh, the hard work in the weight room with the voice coach. Um, so many different people I'd like to thank, but most importantly, uh, it's just good to be back with you once again, Joel. We're going we to have some fun this year. And, and glad like that the, <laughs> I got Dr. Russ over here laughing. Talk about the voice coach. <laughs> and glad to have Dr. Russ Triaga on with us as well. So we'll wrap it up. I've got the cue. We got to get out of here. We'll see you down the road for Lewis Preston, Russ Triaga, and everybody that was with us this weekend from the Hawks Naismith Tip-Off Classic. We'll see you down the road right here. The Russ